This is part 20 of the troop. We're nearly done. I have a giant slowpoke. So after the last part, I ended it with the horrific description of what Shelly looks like. Now Newton and Max are trying to get the spark plugs from the cave and dip so they can get off the island. But Shelly, of course, thwarted the action and he's crawling at them upside down, of course, in a crab walking fashion because bro's a free. And his stomach is so bloated and wriggling, it's ready to pop. Max pushed Shelly off of him because he came at him all like, hoo hoo, surprise, arms on the shoulder and everything, and he's like, ugh. Max tried to scurry away. Newton tried to leave as well, but Shelly came at Newton, knocked him down, and crawled on top of him. Newton's trying to fight Shelly off push him off so he can get away also trying not to get infected by these worms because bros drooling everywhere and spitting on new and the most horrific description of his stomach writhing one more time before exploding organs blood intestines viscera all over newton just vomit and his stomach contents all over newton bro's infected now newton flips his shit screaming trying to get off of him shelly goes slack believe he's deceased flops on the ground and the boys escape they book it down to the beach and newton goes into the water and trying to wash as much stuff off as possible but at this point it's too late and max knew this too he is now witnessing another loss as we go but he's trying not to think too hard about it there's still time to save him so he thinks there is another quick moment back in the courtroom where one of the naval captains is being in an uh, interview He's on the stand and the defense and the prosecutors are like, let me ask you some questions there. Do you know of a Claude Lafleur? I have no recollection of knowing who that person is. We found Claude Lafleur's fingerprints inside Dr. Edgerton's lab. He is a part of taking this test subject of the Hydadid, the worms, and using the island as a test subject, knowing that these boys were going to be there. This whole biological attack was now um, used in real time by Claude Lafleur. He was our little plug. He was the mule to transport the stuff out of the lab. I still have no recollection of knowing who that person is. Right, because Claude Lafleur happened to work under your uh, naval platoon ship. Fuck, work. I still have no recollection of knowing who that is. Really, sir, so Claude Lafleur not only worked under you, but he worked close to you, and he babysat your children for better part of five years. Are you not going to answer the questions, Captain? Witness maintains silence. Do you care to answer any of the questions about Claude Lafleur taking the worm subjects and using it in real time? Witness maintains silence. Were you aware of Claude Lafleur doing this under your guise and your watch? Witness maintains silence. The courtroom sesh ends, and the boys are now panicking. So the boys were down at the beach. Newton could feel the worms burrowing into his skin as he's trying to scrub himself off. And Max looks at him, and he's like, Newt, I'm... I'm getting hungry. I'm getting tired. And then Newton looks at Max real sorrowfully and he's like, I think I'm getting hungrier than you now. Bum, bum, bum. So it was getting dark again and the boys made a campfire, but Newton was taking those, uh, the fungus and the plants that could make you vomit. And he was busy trying to evacuate as many worms from his system as possible. And it just wasn't working it was working but i mean he was still affected max felt really bad he tried to sit near him and comfort him but newton's like you gotta stay back it's i'm done for my guy go enjoy the fire i'm gonna be here dying when morning came one of the military helicopters buzzed overhead got in close and was observing the island right above the boys and they tried to wave it down and scream for help and it just sat there and i watched him then it turned and then it left they realized yet again that they weren't there to help them. The adults 
were supposed to help them because they're kids, but they realized that these adults were going to wait until they died. They didn't care about them. By this point in the morning, Newton was starting to really feel it. Uh, he was losing feeling and sight in his left eye, and he asked Max to look. And Max kind of got in close to like observe his eye to see if he noticed anything. And of course, he saw a little worm wriggling around in there, and he pretended that, oh no, there's there's nothing. Uh, you sure? You sure your your eyes fine? Uh, no, I I I have tunnel vision. And I'm losing sight in my left eye. Are you sure there's nothing in there? I is. It looks fine, my guy. Um, I think. Don't worry about it. So, when the boys fled the cave with Shelly the first time, I guess Max dropped the spark plugs in their initial escape to get Newt out of there. As he was covered in fluids. So, Max is like, I gotta go back in that cave and find the spark plugs because I dropped them. And Newt's like, I can go for you because I'm already infected. And he's like, I can't do that to you, my guy. So Max took a flare from the boat and went back to the cave to get the spark plug. And as he entered this cave, there was white specks of worms coating the entire cave. Shelly's body was deceased and sprawled out with pus and worms oozing out of it. and his body twitched slightly of course horror movie fact. and max went forward and he just kept watching him he kept watching all the worms he was watching shelly he went over and he picked up the spark plugs from a little puddle near the body and at that moment the body of course twitched again and he's like oh Grabbed the spark plug, started to back out, and then Shelly's body flexed, and this huge, gigantic, six foot, maybe four feet, six foot, giant tapeworm erupted from his fucking spine, and it started crawling out and trying to, it was flopping around like a tentacle, and Max is like, I'm out of here. Fuck this.